Hey, it's time for Streaming Idiots. I'm Tom Sinclair, your chief idiot. It's going to be a great show today. We're going to talk about Skype and talk about cameras and how software switchers work with the cameras. And then I got a, a, a secret on the pink sheet. Stay around. It's going to be really neat. Hey there, hey there, hey there, Tom Sinclair here, uh, you streaming idiot guy, just excited about today's show, and whoops, forgot to do my headphone thing, let me take a second and get that, um, it's because I want to be able to hear all the, the audio of all these exciting things that we're doing today, you know, these are just a little cheap pair of $3 earbuds, but they really do do the different, they really do make the difference, they kind of make me feel plugged in, and they're not real noticeable. So it's amazing what you can do. You don't need the, you know, the custom ear fit ones uh, when these will do, you know, 80% of the job for 5% of the cost or less anyway. So today going to be a great show. Got a bunch of guys in the chat room and I appreciate you guys showing up. Um, if you're watching us live and you don't have access to the chat room, go to uh, easternshorebroadcasting.com and click on the live watch now link, and I think it has the video and the chat room on the same page. Um, and if you're watching us on YouTube, I'm delighted that you would. We're actually going to post this one on Wednesday instead of on Friday, so you'll get it sooner, because I think it's good stuff, and I don't want you to wait. Today, we're going to talk about cameras and how software switchers can actually get in and control the cameras. That's going to be fun and interesting. And we're going to talk about Skype video. And everybody talks about Skype video, but we're talking about Skype video back to your Skype guest. So, and, and I'll tell you more about that and why I wanted to do that. Um, and we're also going to talk about the pink sheet. And I think I'm going to start with the pink sheet. So let me grab the pink sheet here and tell you about the pink sheet. This is the pink sheet. I use the pink sheet about... Uh, Oh, I don't know, maybe two years ago when I was broadcasting soccer, and especially when I was doing pay-per-view. And I would tell them, I would pass this around the stadium. It says, call home. Tell them this game is being televised live on Internet TV. Visit, and then I had my website, SinclairSportsNetwork.com. And it's bright pink, and so it attracts a lot of attention. And I had a couple of hundred of them made up for, you know, $4 or whatever it was and had them passed out in the stadium. And you could just see people getting on their cell phones and calling home or calling grandma or calling somebody else to say, hey, you know, you want to watch what's going on here? You can. And we did it for pay-per-view. We also did it for, for the free show where we had uh, advertiser sponsors. And so uh, it was a lot of fun. And I think it probably in some cases doubled or even tripled our viewing audience. Um, and we did it at the beginning of the season so that people could, you know, begin to kind of get the idea. And some people, some people will listen to an announcement in the stadium. Some people will, will you know, kind of cl get clued in if you send out an email alert in advance. But other people, you just kind of have to smack them in the face with it right when it's time. So uh, put this into your arsenal of, of great ideas. You don't have to tell them I came up with it. Um, and, you know, you can do any, any text, anything you think is going to make sense, but it needs to be gaudy, it needs to be bright and gaudy, and it needs to call attention to itself. And these are, I don't know that it comes across real well in the video, but these are actually hot pink. And so they're, they're very, very, very noticeable. Um, Today's show is a little different. Uh, we're doing Streaming Idiots, and it is the first time that I, I can think of that we have done Streaming Idiots using uh, vMix and Wirecast. Typically, we'll do Streaming Idiots using VidBlaster and Wirecast, but we decided to try to put it together with, um, with vMix today. We're using vMix 14, uh, build 102, I think, and then Wirecast 4. And 
I, as you may know, I upgraded briefly to Wirecast 5. The day after I did that, they announced Wirecast 6 coming out. And so they actually were very gracious and gave me my money back and let me revert back to 4. And what the upgrade from 4 to 6 is a little bit more money than the upgrade from 4 to 5. So I have to save a few more pennies uh, in order to be able to do that. In fact, I saved some of the pennies that I was, I mean, I spent some of the pennies that I was saving on a new uh, Blackmagic Intensity Pro card because I want to experiment with uh, my Canon Vixia camera and see if uh, that has less CPU use with the Intensity Pro as compared to the Logitech uh, C920. Uh, obviously, cost-wise, the C920 is, is the way to go, but as you begin to, you know, get, get a few shekels that you can set aside, you might be able to make the upgrade. And I want to be able to tell you, having made the upgrade, whether it's worth it or not. Um, do you run into audio sync problems? You know, are there other issues? So uh, we'll, we'll get to that in the next week or two, I hope. But today, really excited about two things. Um, I guess about three weeks ago, I showed you how to use the Logitech webcam software to go in and, and adjust the webcam, actually the webcams. I had three Logitech webcams hooked up to my PC and was able to use Logitech's software kind of through a back door. I don't think it was an intended feature, but I could control the, the zoom and color correction on all three cameras separately, which before, you know, I've, in fact, I've preached that and I've said uh, it wasn't something that was possible. Well, I stumbled on it one night and it worked, but since then it has not worked consistently. The zoom I can get to work consistently, but the color correction I can't get to work consistently. I'm not sure exactly why that is. I'm sure there's a combination of you know opening this software first or that software first probably impacts it. So I decided to see what our, our favorite software switching softwares, software switching, or software switchers would do. And that would be Vid, Vid Blaster, vMix, and Wirecast. And so I, I sat down and played with them and said, okay, how much of what you want to do can you do through the software itself, not through the camera software? And from my perspective, there, there are three things that I want to do. And, and you might say, well, that's, there are really only two, or there might be five, and so I'm not going to argue semantics on that. But, but first, I want to be able to control the zoom. And part of controlling the zoom also is to be able to pan a little bit, pan left, right, pan up and down, so that I can get my shot with me in the same. In fact, I'm a little bit off center today, aren't I? Boy, that's me. I'm, I'm, I need to lean a little bit more to the right. Um, anyway, um, I want to be able to control that through the software. I want to be able to zoom a little bit and then pan a little bit to get the shot the way I want. The second thing I want to do is to be able to, to get the color right. Now I say right because right is in the eye of the beholder, and I say color because really what I mean by that is a combination of things. Exposure, number one, white balance, number two, and then all the other corrections that come after that in terms of um, you know, saturation, et cetera, et cetera. So I said, okay, how much of my goals can I achieve using the three, my three favorite softwares, VidBlaster, vMix, and Wirecast? So I said, okay, let's find out. And I went and found out. And so I thought, well, let me go ahead and show you guys. So I went ahead and recorded this. So this has been recorded a little bit. Um, and there's an intro into it because I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and upload this as a separate video later, so you know forgive forgive the intro, but uh, this is this is the deal. So let me cue this up and make sure we got some audio, and here we go. Hi, this is Tom Sinclair with Streaming Idiots. How do different software switchers control cameras? We're talking like white balance and zoom and color and stuff like that. Let's take a look. First, we're going to start with VidBlaster. So let's fire up VidBlaster here. And we have set up a profile in VidBlaster that shows three different cameras. And with each of the three cameras, you can see me down in the bottom one, 
Um, the first on the left is a Logitech C310. The one in the middle is a C920, excuse me. And on the one on the right is a C920 also. In order to do that, we have to be using VidBlaster version 3. And in modules, we'd have to be using a camera 3 module, camera Roman numeral 3 module, which I've got down here. And this setting is sort of hidden in the camera menu. So hold down the control key and the shift key and then right click a camera module. It'll drop down a box and if you go down to debug down here at the very bottom of the menu and then down to property page at the bottom of that menu, it will bring up the software or driver settings associated with that camera. In this case, the Logitech C310. So we've got the ability, and we'll pull that over to the side for a second, we've got the ability to adjust the zoom, and if we go into advanced settings, we can adjust the color, so we can take the uh, white balance off and adjust the white balance, and that will adjust the white balance in that one. Well, let's show you the color intensity. Yeah, you can see the color intensity. We're not going to save that. We'll cancel that. Do you want to save your changes? Nope. And we can take the second camera here, hold down the control key, shift key, right click, down to debug, down to property page, and brings up C920. And let's pull that over. And we can see that it does not control the camera that we selected. It controls the other C920, which happens to be the first C920 in our system. And so any color controls will happen, turn that off, will happen to the other camera. So in VidBlaster, you cannot control the two identical cameras, but you can control two cameras, even though they may be the same brand, if they're different models, you can control those separately. So let's exit VidBlaster, and let's go into Wirecast. Now for this demonstration, we're using Wirecast 4, because that's what I have a license for. The version of VidBlaster that we just looked at was version 3 of VidBlaster. So let's put a Wirecast in here to the middle, and we'll go full screen on that. I've set up three camera shots down here at the bottom. That's our C310, the C920, the number one, and the C920, number two. If I take, let's say, the C930 for example, 930, excuse me, the C310, and right click that, bring up the edit shot menu, and then I can hold down the Alt key, I believe it is, and pull my mouse up and down to change and zoom that particular camera. So we'll leave that one. We'll go into our next cam, right click, edit shot, hold down the Alt key, and we can zoom in a little bit there. And then go right click excuse me, left click to select the third camera, right click to edit shot, hold down the Alt key, we can drag and zoom, and then of course we can shift the position just by holding and dragging. We've got a little bit of gray at the bottom, there we go. And we'll make this just a little bit larger. So it's as if we were panning it. So we've got that control, and as we select that shot, it changes to that. Now, in, in deference to Wirecast, I've looked, but I cannot find a way to control the color in Wirecast. So if you know how to do that, let me know. But at this point, I can't find a way from within Wirecast to control color. So let's go out of Wirecast, and we'll look. Oops, let me try one more time. Don't save. There we go. We'll look at vMix. This is vMix 14. And we've got a preset that we want to look at that's cam color zoom test. There we go. And that's going to load our three cameras down here in the bottom. You can see the C920, which is the green background shot, the second C920, which is the desktop shot, and then the C310, which is actually a camera pointed at one of the, screen, one of the monitors. So down here in the corner, of the shot is a little gear, and we'll, we'll look at the C310 first, and we'll bring up the menu associated with that gear, 
and over here on the left side we have some menus and we can go into the position menu here and we have the options for zoom and pan and crop and in this case we're just going to let's move that menu out, out of the way a little bit so you can see better we're just going to zoom it just a little bit how about that and then that, just for fun we're going to just pan it a little bit there we go and then we might raise it up just a little bit there we go and we could crop it all also so we'll hit X to get out of that actually we could have stayed in it and then we could have gone to color adjust and here we could set the auto white balance and uh, hat tip to George Price for showing us how to do that basically we're going to use a piece of white and put that in front of the camera touch auto white balance and then select that and that will give us the white balance for that camera we can also adjust the saturation and we can adjust the contrast and the brightness which here are called black stretch and white stretch and let's just reset those the way they were and we'll uh, let's bump up the contrast to something ugly so we know that that's been done there we go and that's pretty ugly but it's been done so let's take our first C920 that's going to be over here on the left side I'll put it up in the preview window we'll hit the gear to configure we'll come down to position and let's zoom it so that we've got no junk on the sides of the green screen and we want to pan it can we pan it up a little bit there we go that's good so that's where we want it and then we can go over to color adjust and we can do our white balance so now we have our white balance set and if I don't happen to like if I have I think I've got a little bit more tan than that let's see if I can just put a little bit more saturation with it a little bit more contrast there we go and that's pretty good so we've got that one set and now we can go to our our second C920 and this is the one that sometimes you have trouble with so we're going to go to position we're going to go to zoom and let's pan it left right we're going to go a little bit more to the left and then we want to send it up so we can see the whole desktop but we went up too far because there's a little black at the bottom there we go and we could crop it too if we wanted to do that and then if we were going to go to the color adjust we can do the auto white balance we'll use that light as a good example and I'll tell you what let's try again that light might have been too bright auto white balance there's our yeah and that's got a little bit more blue in it and a little bit less red and we can also adjust the saturation so that we have obviously there's saturation there and the same thing with the contrast and the brightness and that will give us three shots so of the three the one that seems to be most versatile at least at this point as of today and, and keep in mind that there's a, two newer versions of Wirecast out than the one I'm trying um, but vMix seems to have the best ability to control the camera so far as color uh, white balance, contrast, saturation, those kinds of things, and zoom, which includes uh, crop and pan tilt. Not really tilt, but you know what I mean. Anyway, that's Tom Sinclair, Streaming Idiots, with a glimpse into how three different software switchers handle uh, cameras. Hope you'll tune in to our weekly show, Streaming Idiots, Wednesday afternoons at uh, 3 o'clock, excuse me, 2 o'clock Eastern. Or is it 3 o'clock Eastern? I think it's 3 o'clock Eastern. There we go. Anyway, tune in. We'd love to have you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes I should not be let out in public. Anyway, the, good, good information there, and interesting to see how the different softwares handle it, and, you know, which ones are more important. I mean, in some ways, VidBlaster assumes that you're going to have your cameras kind of color-corrected, and set before VidBlaster takes control. Um, the limitation, of course, is when you have a, a situation like I have here with two Logitech C920s and not being able to control those separately through the Logitech software, or at least not reliably separately. 
Um, the, uh, my guess is that you can probably do more controls in the camera itself by adjusting all of that than you can in the software. But I'll tell you, for a one-man show like this, um, you know, I've got one, I'm, I'm one guy, got one PC, got, a, got several different cameras, but the whole concept is that, that I can do all of this myself from my desk and, and make those corrections. So it's nice to be able to do that. Um, and it, it depends on your level of, of perfection on the scale of uh, perfection from a, you know, as long as it works a little bit, I'm happy to, it's got to be absolutely perfect. Excuse me. You know, where you are in that, in that perfection scale, um, you may not want to let the, the, uh, the software do that. You may want to make those adjustments in the cameras yourself. Um, anyway, interesting to see how different softwares handle that. And um, again, you know, my apologies to Wirecast if versions 5 or 6 handle it differently. Um, I probably should have downloaded a, a trial and, and tried that, but just ran out of time on that one. Um, so play with that. You can, you can download, I think you can download free trials of all three of the softwares, VidBlaster, uh, Wirecast, and vMix. And I think vMix has a, a limited time trial, but there's no watermark. Uh, v, uh, Wirecast and VidBlaster both have watermarks, but they have unlimited trials. So um, try them out. See which one works best for you. If you think I can help you with any or all of those, uh, because, you know, depending on what you're doing, uh, different softwares work better in those different applications. Uh, some of them work pretty much the same in basic applications, but when you get into you know sports or, or other kinds of things that have some sort of specialized needs, one software may be more uh, maybe easier to use or easier to learn. You know, if you've got a situation where you've got uh, new new users learn, using it every day, uh, maybe a school situation, something like that, you might find that one is is easier to use than another. And so I can help you with that. Just you know, pop me a line, Tom at streamingidiots.com, and uh, we'd be happy to respond and help as we can. Let's check this the uh, the uh, chat room and see. Okay, those guys seem to be behaving in there today, so we'll see. Um, the other thing that uh, oh, and 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 you saw the 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 white balance trick. That was that, that was pretty good. Just a piece of white white paper. And virtually anything that's white would probably work. I found for vMix, I had to hold it pretty much in the center of the screen in order to be able to get a little part of it somewhere that I could click. But that was nice. And sometimes it didn't really go where I thought it needed to go in terms of white balance. Now, I will tell you, none of the, none of the three had an exposure control. Um, and so I was a little disappointed in that. And I would have liked to have had a little bit more control over the color. But uh, I think they're moving in the right direction, so it's it's nice to see that. And there also may be that uh, your your capture card, if you're using a, a, a handy cam or a video camera of some kind, and have a capture card, that your capture card software may have some some color correction in it as well. That's a note that's coming out of the chat room. Thank you, Martin, for that. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, um, full disclosure time, I just want to let you know for the record that I am an, a licensed, not licensed, what's the right word? I guess I'm an authorized vMix reseller, I'm an authorized VidBlaster reseller, and still working on the folks at Wirecast, and also have a number of streaming accessories available for purchase through our streaming accessories store at easternshorebroadcasting.com. So if you would like to purchase any of that and get uh, personal support from me, please feel free to go to easternshorebroadcasting.com, go to the store. Uh, if you've got a question about how something works before you make the purchase, shoot me an email. Everything in the streaming accessory store I have personally used. So I can, I can counsel you on that. And it may be you know, that it's, it's not a matter of which one's best, but it's a matter of which one's best for you. And, and sometimes, uh, sometimes bigger is not always better. So anyway, that's my, my two cents worth uh, full disclosure add on that one. Uh, let's see. Um, let's go now and talk about Skype. 
good old Skype. The one thing you can depend on about Skype is you can't really depend on it. It, it, it changes whenever it wants to. There was a while, what was it, about a year or so ago, maybe 18 months ago, where Skype made a change, updated, everybody updated, and they found out that uh, their virtual video that they were sending to Skype in order to send to uh, a, their guest host uh, suddenly didn't work. And uh, in fact, VidBlaster was the only one that had a virtual video device that continued to work with Skype. That was uh, that was pretty wild. It's it's all worked out since then. But it was just one of those things where Skype didn't let anybody know, that, or if they did, they certainly didn't let me know what what kind of change they were about to make. So here's the scenario: you're doing a show like this, and you're bringing in a guest, or maybe you're in a church and you're bringing in a speaker and the speaker is actually located in a different country or a different state or a different time zone and you want to bring them in on Skype and you want to bring them in so that, well, a, a good example um, and that this is not even Skype, this was uh, um, using the, the, the Google Hangouts when we did the great VidBlaster uh, roundtable about two months ago we brought in seven guests, and each one of those seven guests got the return video from, from me that was the show video. And so when they, when they were looking at something that was me, it was the show video. Well, that's not a good example. Let's, let's scratch that, scratch that. Let's go back to the Skype example, because that, that's a whole, different, a whole different example of something else. In Skype, well, here, here's where this whole thing came from for me. Uh, last week, uh, the guys out in California and Australia at um, Tech Down Over, a uh, great little show, uh, Rick, Rick Zanotti invited me to be on that. I've really appreciated that, Tech, Tech Down Over. And when we, got out, when we were setting up for the show, I noticed, well, I noticed immediately when I called in for Skype that they didn't have a return video for me. Uh, all they had was the you know the standard picture that comes when you don't have a, a return video of any kind. So it was almost like I was doing a radio interview, except they had my video. And the, the downside for me in my experience was I didn't know when my shot was full screen. I didn't know when my shot was off screen. I didn't know when my shot was split with something else. Um, so as a result, I was kind of like on cue, on target, um, the whole show, which, you know, fortunately for me was okay, but I can imagine for some other folks that that can be a little disconcerting. You know, if you've got a sneeze or if you've got to scratch your nose or, or, you know, you notice that your hair is out of place or something like that, you want to be able to, uh, tr try to take that moment. And, uh, when, when you're not on the screen, in order to to kind of get things fixed up, so I was totally in the dark. I was flying in the dark, and and that was okay with me. But I can understand for for other guests that that might not be. And as I was chatting with the guys before the show and after the show, um, and they were using Wirecast for the show. I think they had Wirecast five. I don't know that they'd upgraded to six yet, although they were talking about it. Um, they were they they were, seemed a little reluctant to send uh, a return video in Skype because they'd had some problems with that in the, in the past. And I really wasn't able to nail down for them exactly what the, what the issue was. Um, perhaps it was bandwidth. And if that's the case, I can certainly understand that. If you've got limited bandwidth and you're streaming out to your CDN and you're also re receiving a Skype video in from your guest, the last thing you want to do is to be able to take up even more of your bandwidth by sending a second video stream out that goes back to the guest. Um, and you can't, you know, you can't tell the guest to turn into the, sh tune into the show because there's always a, a delay. I mean, today we tested the delay here in pre-show and the delay for the flash feed was, was three seconds and for the HTML5 feed for iOS stuff was 25 seconds. And, you know, even a three second delay is, is not good enough. I mean, by the time you discover that you're on full shot, <laughs> it's three seconds too late. Heaven forbid you were doing something that you would later regret. So I thought, okay, well, let's find out just how hard it is in the, the three more popular streaming softwares 
let's find out how hard it is to hook those up to Skype for return video. Now, we're not talking about the guest's video because I'm assuming everybody knows how to do that, although perhaps we ought to run through that one again sometime soon, too. But for today, we're talking about how to send the return video back to your guest so that your guest can have a clue of where they are. And what I've done in the past, and I guess there are different ways to do it, but I've just simply taken the program feed and sent that back. And that way they know what's going on. Um, you know, I've had other people say, well, I, I, you know, I take a webcam that's not in use by my streaming software and I'll let Skype use that. And so the folks, uh, so that my guests can see me. Um, and I guess that's okay. But really, as a guest, I want to see, am, am I on or am I off? Um, you know, if you're showing a video, have you got, have you got me as a picture in picture in the bottom of the screen? Because you want to gauge my reaction. I mean, I, I you know, unless I've got some way of knowing, I don't know. And and to make your guests feel most comfortable, and to help them do their best job as your guest, yeah, I think you want to you want to give them the advantage of knowing as much as they can know. And visually, of course, you know, video is is the way to go. So. Uh, with that introduction, let me let me cue up the video that I made earlier today. And basically, it's just going to be, um, you know, how to do Skype video out to a guest. Nothing fancy, nothing fancy. So let me get that queued up, and here we go. Hi, this is Tom Sinclair with Streaming Idiots. When I have a Skype guest on my show, I want to make sure they can see what's going on in the show so they can know how best to respond. And the best way for me to do that is when I use my streaming software is to send video back to them that shows them what's going on in the show. Let me show you how to do that in three popular softwares. We're going to start out first with VidBlaster. You can see in VidBlaster I've got a program mo module up and I've got a camera module up and I'm going to add an output module. Now this output module is only available in the pro version and higher. It's not for available in this in the home version. And so we're going to say whatever's in the program, let's send to the VidBlaster VVD and we'll turn that on. And then we'll bring in Skype and go into Tools in Skype, into Options, and then into Video Settings. And I can select from the Video Settings here we go, VidBlaster VVD. So now whatever's in my program module in VidBlaster will now be sent to my Skype guest. So if I'm showing a video or showing a PowerPoint or showing a still shot of some kind or just my own audio, my own video myself, I can have my Skype guest be able to see that. And of course you know how to send the audio back to them because you're probably already doing that. But that's how to do that in VidBlaster. So let's try it in Wirecast. So we'll bring up Wirecast and this is, uh, this is, that was VidBlaster version 3, this is Wirecast version 4 and I know Wirecast version 6 is is out now but I haven't upgraded to that. So let's get a little something there in the screen, there we go, right there. Something in the screen to send out and so we're going to go up to Broadcast we're going to go to Virtual Camera Out. We're going to select the, the size that we want, the resolution that we want, and click Start. And then we'll bring Skype in again. Go into Tools. Go into Options. Go into Video Settings. And then come over here to Wirecast Virtual Camera. And there I am. Now you can send video back to your Skype guest. Same thing, whatever's going out in program. We'll also go back to your Skype guest. So let's cancel out of that. The last one that we want to show you is vMix. Stop broadcast. Yes, thank you. Uh, let's see. Let's fire up vMix here. This is vMix version 14. And let's do, let's add a camera so that we've got something to show you. And there we go, and that automatically popped into our program. And then down here at the bottom, you can see external. So we can go to settings, and we can configure, and, and we can see that the vMix video streaming 
is already set for 30 frames a second, 720. So that's fine. And we'll turn that on, and it turns red. And then when we go into Skype, go into Tools, go into Options, go to Video Settings, and then, let's see, looks like vMix is already set. We'll set it to, to that. That's going to tell us, oh, that's the, yeah, that's the wire cam. The uh, C9, th nine, excuse me, three C310 that we're not using. But let's go back to vMix. That's vMix. So we can save that. And then now when we talk to a Skype guest, they get to see what's ever in the program module. Now you do want to be a little careful in all three programs with this because if you, if you have a limited internet speed, you don't want to send high resolution video back to your guest. So you may want to bump it down a little bit in terms of, of uh, the resolution so that you don't eat up all your bandwidth. But that's how you do it in VidBlaster, vMix, and Wirecast. Hey, pretty cool, huh? I'm Tom Sinclair with Streaming Idiots. We'd love to have you tune into our show Wednesday afternoons at 3 Eastern at uh, easternshorebroadcasting.com. We'll see you then. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Okay. So, it, it actually, it's, it's pretty simple. I don't think it taxes any of the software from a CPU standpoint. I don't think it taxes the software, but just a smidgen to send that extra video out uh, or virtual video out because it's really not going anywhere. It's just being made available to Skype as if it were a camera. So we're kind of fooling Skype into thinking that the, the output from these different software programs is actually uh, actually a webcam, which is the way Skype was intended to be used. So the, the, the beauty of that is that, you know, again, your guests can see exactly what's going on. Now, audio, of course, audio is handled, you know, totally separately from that. You, you don't want to necessarily count on your, your streaming software to handle the audio. If you've got uh, your audio set up with a separate mixer, as is my recommendation, then you're going to want to do a mix minus situation so that your Skype desk guest doesn't get their return audio back because either it's going to produce an, a, a delay uh, or maybe an echo or maybe a feedback situation um, or it'll just be something annoying to the guest that will kind of frustrate them because they'll say something and hear it kind of slightly off uh, in, their, in their ears. Um, uh, while we're talking about Skype guests, I am a big fan of Skype guests not using uh, desktop speakers to get their audio back to them. It just, you know, it, it can create it can create problems. I am a big fan of earbuds. I'm not a big fan of earmuffs. I know a lot of folks like those because they look cool, but uh, you know, it's just one way to sort of separate yourself from from regular folk by having uh, the earmuffs on. And I, I know the TV announcers do it in, in football and basketball and baseball, but, you know, I, th I think it's cooler just to be just us guys chatting kind of thing. Um, and I also think that Skype guests should not use, if they're using a webcam, they should not use the audio from the webcam. That is just a, a no-no because the camera in the, excuse me, the, the microphone or microphones, as the case may be, some of them have stereo mics, um, it, it is going to pick up all the ambient noise, it's going to pick up echoes in the room, uh, and it's not going to be that good, clear audio that you want. Um, a small mixer and a good mic like the ATR2100, uh, and in fact the ATR2005 is the same mic, I think, but in a different color, but it's also $10 less on Amazon. Go figure on that one. A good mic like that and a small mixer will improve the audio production over a webcam mic by, you know, by, by tons. Uh, you know, I don't know what the percentage would be, but by tons. It would be tons different um, and definitely worth the, the time and effort. Um, one of the things that I've been working on is, uh, is working on a portable studio that uh, you know, people can either purchase you know, that my clients that were working with me on a, on a local uh, weekly broadcast, they can either purchase this or I can bring it out to their office and set it up and, you know, and kind of rent it to them. But it would include a, a small mixer and the ATR2100 
and some and some earbuds and a, a, a Logitech C920 and a green screen and they would provide their own PC and their own internet connection and we would just you know plug it all in get it all set and then suddenly they can be anywhere they want to be with uh, with a green screen behind them and we can we can lay in the graphics we can lay in videos we can do so many things by just having that one camera shot and that uh, and that green sh excuse me green screen behind it and good audio good audio is key good audio is key okay let's see what we may have missed here in the chat room while I was spinning along there uh, slightly different question from Andrew he says have you been able to get Wirecast to send us to to a second or third monitor I can see the settings but can't seem to get it to start I must be missing a step Andrew I haven't tried that I have tried you know coincidentally I have tried it with both VidBlaster and vMix um, and but I haven't tried it with Wirecast so I'll have to give that a shot and see and it, you know my guess too is sometimes things work not because the software is not capable of making it work but because the hardware i.e. the PC may not be configured in the way that the software is expecting it to be configured um, so you know it'll be interesting to see I've got three monitors set up here it will be interesting to see whether um, you know let's see I think I can show you my setup here yeah there we go uh, I've got vmix here in the center today I've got Wirecast over here on the right with Windows Task Manager to the right of that I've got chat room set up right here on this monitor and then Twitter set up right next to that so we can kind of see everything at one time and in fact have a little bit of extra space over here as we need to so it it and I haven't had the occasion to use uh, to use the the monitor out but I would imagine uh, well I, I know that uh, you know some of my buddies that broadcast football here locally are using VidBlaster and they're using the instant replay with VidBlaster and of course the the technical part of the show is in one part of the the press box and the announcers are close by but they're you know 10 feet away and they can't just simply look over to see what's on the monitor anytime there's a replay so I think they uh, they set up you know they bought a 25 foot VGA cable and plugged it into the laptop on this hand and plugged it into the monitor sitting over in front of these guys and then used the Windows Extend desktop um, to and, and so they enabled a second monitor on their PC and then were able to tell VidBlaster to send the program output um, over to that monitor but they could have told VidBlaster to send any particular output they could have sent just a camera or just a replay or just a video or something to that if they'd wanted to um, so we I will play with that and, and let you know what the case may be on that one um, let's see got also got a recent couple of recent questions here and I thought I would pass them along um, got a question from a vid blaster user who was trying to use uh, wanted to put a video into their production but when they they added a player module which is what you would add in vidblaster and they went in the player module and they found the video that they wanted to use and they sort of had that loaded up in the player module but when they press play there was no audio and they you know they checked the drop down menu but there was there didn't appear to be any kind of audio selection and they said, you know, Tom, how do we get audio? And so I wrote them back and I said, you know, put your mouse over the module and then right click on that module. That'll drop down another menu that's kind of hidden, that's not, not very obvious. And there you can select the audio device. And in that case, that would be the, the audio that your PC sees as a audio, as, a, as an output, as a speaker. So whatever your mixer would would be considered, whatever, however your mixer is attached to your PC, that would be the way you would want to route that audio, route it out to your mixer, and then of course your mixer is going to route it back into your PC once it's mixed with all your other audio, so that you can send it out to the to the world. So that uh, that is how you would do that for that question. 
If you've got any other questions, please feel free to send them to me, Tom at StreamingIdiots.com, and I would be happy to answer them, first of all, by email, but also uh, maybe here on the show, if you don't mind. Uh, Because if you've got that question, then other people will have that question, too. Well, we are about out of time today, but uh, thank you for tuning in. Remember the uh, the hot pink slip trick if you're going to be broadcasting, uh, especially if you want to do pay per view. Uh, and you might, you know, you might put some information on here so that folks don't tune in thinking it's going to be free and find out they have to pay for it. Nothing like uh, you know that sour taste. But in this case, give them as much information as you can, and. Then also how to uh, to do the uh, zoom and color collect correction in the three different softwares, VidBlaster, VMix, and Wirecast. And then how to send video to Skype from VidBlaster, VMix, and Wirecast. That's a summary of today's show. So thanks for tuning in. I hope it was good for you. If I can help you in any way, let me know. Otherwise, we will see you next. No, actually, we won't see you next week. Next week is uh, is going to be Thanksgiving week. We're taking the week off, going to visit family. So there will not be a show next week. We'll make a note on that so that everybody will know. But if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. That way you'll get a notice whenever we, we do a new show. And uh, and if you'd like to, actually go to easternshorebroadcasting.com and, and sign up for our email list. Because when we do some special things, like when we have our winter uh, giveaway contest, we always make sure that we send uh, our email friends a quick note of that. We won't abuse your email, we promise. I'm Tom Sinclair, streaming idiot, the chief idiot here. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you next time.